Hello everybody, we are uh, live directly from IRCAD France from this uh, web search uh, webinar where we are going to talk about laparoscopy, protectomy, technical peers. And uh, I have a pleasure to share this table with uh, Professor Eric Houllier, Professor Junji Okuda, and uh, Professor Bill Hilde from uh, United Kingdom. So we are going to start uh, our webinar where you can interact with us, you can chat, you can ask questions, exactly what we are doing here in the discourse at, in France. And so uh, I hope that uh, everybody is going to enjoy this session. This is just a small snapshot of what happened during our Colorado Advanced course in laparoscopy in, in our units of IRCAD. So Professor Hild, uh, is going to speak with us now about uh, lessons learned from OpenTME. Thank you very much, Armando. It's a great privilege for me. I am uh, Bill Heald. I'm a surgeon from uh, Basingstoke in England, and uh, uh, the uh, Pelican Cancer Foundation is my uh, primary home, but I have also a new and very exciting home at the Champalamo Institute for the Unknown, what a wonderful name that is, uh, right by where uh, Vasco da Gama sailed and discovered half the world. Uh, and you see what a beautiful place it is and what a joy to work in a beautiful hospital. And uh, at the same time, can I invite you to our imaginatively titled Angels and Demons in Rectal Cancer on February the 22nd and 23rd. So please come. It's a wonderful place uh, to learn a lot about modern uh, rectal cancer surgery and colon cancer surgery, especially uh, very good radiation and its application. Tips from open surgery. Anything to teach the laparoscopist? Well, as you will see during my presentation, there are a few tips. I think it's still true to say that suprapubic catheters are the best for major pelvic surgery, but I know very few of you use them, but I assure you we do, and I think that it's much kinder to the urethra to actually to have a, a suprapubic, which you can clamp, clamp and check before you take it out but it does not caught on. So that's a piece of my advice you won't take, I suppose. Um, the other thing that I repeat every time I stand up is that the surgery of bowel cancer is the surgery of the embryology of a midline series of cancer envelopes. First of all, the body put back over to the left side duodenum, pancreas, well, right and left, duodenum, pancreas, spleen. Then the colon and colorectum went in. Remember, it was once out when we were very, very tiny indeed. And then finally, only finally, the stomach and the greater amentum, which is why, for example, there are no blood vessels going from the colon to the amentum. And in laparoscopy, you have perfected the beautiful uh, uh, mobilization technique based on that anatomical principle. The thing you perhaps have the greatest problem with compared with open surgery is applying the traction and counter-traction, which are key to establishing where to go with our sharp dissection uh, and always seeing where we cut. That is, uh, I actually got stopped lift. my friend, um, got a light on it. Brendan Bill's Moore, and talking in the, the background. I'm trying to, there we are. Sorry, Brendan, I stopped you, but that's a healed retractor, which is a modified St. Mark's retractor. You see how long it is and what a long way down we have to get in open surgery, uh, as I showed you this morning with one particular uh, video. The traction and counter-traction is not easy. But let us start with something that is not too difficult, the identifying the shiny visceral package. And whether you do this operation open, robotically, or transanally, or any other way, laparoscopically, you need to start right. And starting right means finding that shiny 
package there. You see there the superior rectal vein with a layer of fascia over it. And once you have found that, you have the basis for the whole operation because around it, with traction and counter-traction, will be a, a white plane in which you can dissect sh sharply, seeing exactly where and how to go. But it is difficult. And you will see that in laparoscopic surgery, I'm taking uh, Professor uh, Capescu from uh, Romania, gave me this lovely little video. I'll actually make it bigger for you. Um, from Bucharest, you see the use of the monopolar hook diathermy, which is also a favorite of my dear friend Amjad Pave, who is our principal teacher of robotic surgery in uh, Champalamo in uh, Lisbon. But you will see that what he's looking for is the shiny package. There you see the superior rectal vein through a shiny package. Now I think that little clip of video is a beautiful example. He is now in the right plane. It is the innermost dissectable plane, and it is uh, another modality of traction using that hook. But it is difficult. Here you see me uh, in Heidelberg, a place where I go regularly, and Marcus Buchler has been a lifelong friend, and you see me very carefully trying to dissect on the yellow side of the white. But the key is always to stay in the white. This is open, that was laparoscopic. We could show you again, it's the white surround between the midline um, envelope of uh, what will be an optimal uh, cancer package, provided one has checked out with the MR that the <coughs> margins are clear. The innermost yellow side of the white the innermost dissectable plane. Uh, nothing could be more fundamental than that. Here is the great Joel Leroy, um, formerly from here. He's now in, uh, 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 in North um, Vietnam. But he was the great um, master here. And you see him showing us how to do the uh, dissection with the advance with the monopolar diathermy tip and the ligature bet uh, between the jaws, a beautiful instrument and a wonderful way of, of doing that holy plane dissection. Throughout my life, I have to say that uh, I and um, formerly Covidian, now Medtronic, have been going round the world trying to show exactly that technique. But we now have many choices. No one can be expert at every method. We have, uh, uh, in throwing in tips, I would like just to show you very quickly the uh, triple stapling technique, the Moran triple stapling technique, which you see there's a finger, we're down very, very low, and we're using a TA-45, an instrument that Medtronic, uh, then Tyco, made for me so that we could pull up and put our definitive staple line uh, through bowel which had been washed. And this is still a technique which I think could be used in uh, whenever you have an incision of any kind suprapubically, you could put these in as an alternative. Again, a piece of advice which is not really uh, followed very much, although the principle of upward traction on the muscle tube and washing out beyond some form of a clamp is still valid. Always check. There is no cancer sticking through. We believe that with the pursuit of that plane, local recurrence is really an avoidable complication. Um, a beautiful specimen. This is from a Heidelberg workshop. Uh, uh, we try to get perfect specimens. Uh, that, they, that looks pretty reasonable. Um, just look how different mesorectal fat with the cancer is from the uh, 
ordinary ischiorectal fat at the back there. You see that a lobular form of uh, uh, fat. But what looks similar, the mesorectal fat, is alive with lymphatics, blood vessels, uh, a lymph gland, malignant lymph gland there. That is a, a, a slice through the mesorectum. You see what dangerous stuff it is to leave behind. My original holy plain hypothesis is the basis of minimally invasive surgery. The midline origin gut and its mesentery, and I've said it all. But could we change it a little bit, perhaps, by taking into account that Denonvilliers and Valdea, which are like septa at the front and the back of the mesorectum, that these are extra layers which perhaps we might dissect inside rather than outside. And I'll just try to explain, first of all, with Denonvilliers, Charles Denonvilliers uh, described in 1837 this um, little septum on the front, which has two layers. He described two layers. And its importance is... Uh, that it's the anterior margin of a good TME specimen in the mid-rectum area, but also that the neurovascular bundles which contain the key nerves of sexual function are immediately lateral to its lateral edge, where you see this uh, arrow on the left. So it's a very important anatomical structure. Umberto Perini and I used to compete with doing laparoscopic versus open, and I got one of the best open pictures of uh, Denovillier's septum ever uh, in his lovely hospital in Aosta, in the beautiful uh, mountains there. But you see how the trapezoidal septum is the key to the anterior plane. And if you look anterolaterally, just lateral to it, you will see that the, uh, the lateral to the edge of uh, Denonvilliers, there is just mesorectal fat. Well, the plane much more difficult to follow there. So those are some pictures from open surgery. And here, a tip from open surgery. Eventually, we have to make a U-shaped incision in Denonvilliers' septum. And of course, an advantage for the open surgeon is that if you had an anterior cancer here, those fingers could be checking that you were distal to the cancer. So that uh, all of these anatomical details are things that we all share. Here you see me in an open case dissecting behind Denonvilliers' septum. And uh, you'll see here where the monopolar diathermy is just going behind between the mesorectal fat and Denonvilliers septum. So could there be advantages? The, these pictures come from Professor Sakai in Kyoto. And what, what you see here is the two layers of fascia, one covering the visceral envelope, the other lining the parietal surround. Um, but I'd like just to show you him dissecting beautifully, laparoscopically, inside the... Actually, I seem to have the... There we are. Inside Denonvilliers' septum. And you see here he's using the monopolar diathermy to stay in that plane rather better than I was doing open. But why would that be an advantage? And the answer, of course, is that it will lead you more readily into the plane within the nerves as you go laterally. So there are perhaps advantages in staying behind Denonvilliers. What about Valdea at the back? This is a, a, a Heidelberg case, and I would just show you that in fact, we were entirely happy. Jürgen Weitz and I, operating together there, were entirely happy. But we were, in fact, behind Valdea, as indeed, if you look at the specimen where the arrow is, you can see that we are behind it. We are therefore in that dangerous outer plane 
where we can make things bleed. So I think that we're beginning to learn things from robotic and laparoscopic surgery um, for open surgery, because I was quite unaware that I was behind Valdea in what I think is a more dangerous place. Let me illustrate that with this particular diagram. You see, Denonvillier, uh, sorry, um, the Valdea fascia or rectosacral ligament is, is described as coming forward from the presacral fascia and becoming adherent to the mesorectal fascia anteriorly and potentially it does define an outer and an inner space. And these are really very important. And one of the, th this, uh, I'm very grateful to the, my colleagues from Colchester in England for giving me this very important picture of a transanal TME in which the surgeon going up is actually outside this white layer that you see there is one layer too far out and you see he uh, uh, realizes this Greg Wynn is the surgeon and he's realized he's outside and because he's seen bare bone at the back so here you see using a harmonic scalpel in this case he is actually finding the correct plane and what he is pushing down there is indeed Valdea's septum or the rectosacral ligament so I think I'm learning things uh, from robotic surgery, from laparoscopic surgery, from transanal surgery, and I think we've all got to learn these crucial layers in the pelvis if we're to do perfect nerve-sparing TMEs for our patients in the future. This is Amjad Pave using a robot, and I'm going to jump forward to this picture Sorry, I'm sorry. Just, yeah, there we are. Now, a little further up, or down, I should say, um, a little further down, you see him carefully preserving Valdea and pushing it gently back towards the sacrum and thus actually remaining in a safe avascular plane, which will lead him laterally, naturally, to preserve the nerves. So you see the, ner the um, hypogastric nerves going down there. So it's all about the innermost yellow side of the white. And perhaps we should be rethinking whether we go in front of or behind Denonvilliers or Valder, and perhaps we should be looking very carefully at the MRIs and deciding in advance this shows transanal TME, if I get a video run here, I probably will, yes. This is Roel Hompis, actually in Basingstoke, dissecting behind Denonvidier's septum in a transanal TME. And one of the important things about this, I again have to jump towards the end, um, because, actually, no, not quite that far. As you go laterally, you'll see this is the... You see him carefully dissecting anyway. And we do, if I pick the right bit of that video, you would actually see the nerves rather beautifully. But I keep getting the position in the video slightly wrong. There we are. That, you see there the... Let's go back again just a touch, because it is a beautiful picture. And it is really the battle between the methods is the battle for nerve preservation and function, which is the aspect of our craft. That is a, a transanal um, TME that's gone wrong by getting outside the correct layer and actually injuring the urethra. It's dangerous, the lower, the bottom bit of the dissection requires special practice. They all require special practice. So, Finally, thank you. This is difficult, challenging, and uh, I've tried to give you, a, for a starter, a few little tips, but I think the tips are actually going um, more in the direction of open surgery from laparoscopic and robotic surgery because you're seeing everything better and we're learning more about the 
uh, anatomy from the superior view that we get in minimally invasive surgery. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Hill. Do you have uh, any questions from the audience? I believe that uh, last I've reduced you to silence. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not, really. Um, we've been talking about these things, uh, and yesterday we saw beautiful, beautiful demonstrations of many of those things, so that I'm guilty of some repetition, but I think they are really important things, and they're slightly new, really, for many of us. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to continue our session with uh, Eric Houllier. He's going to speak. Uh, Bill, please have a seat with us. You want me back up there? Yeah. Uh, we are going to have. Uh, we are going to continue now with uh, Eric Houllier. He's going to speak on the six-step approach for laparoscopy TME, and also a sphincter-saving approach during laparoscopy TME. Eric. So thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Not easy to speak after the pop of uh, TME surgery. And uh, the, the idea is to give you some, uh, uh, some recommendation to improve your learning curve in the laparoscopic procedure. So what you need uh, compared to open surgery is to understand that laparoscopic surgery is more difficult. So it's why you need to uh, standardized much more than open. So it's why you can have your standardization. I propose mine, but you can change. But what you need is to go step by step. And for each step, you need to have one anatomical landmark. And you can go uh, further uh, to your procedure. So um, the beginning, you must absolutely try to find the good exposure. This is what is the most difficult in laparoscopic surgery. So you must uh, uh, pull, pull the, the, the rectum in front of you, you pull up, and then you look at the promontory and uh, you go two centimeters in front of the promontory and you begin by the first step. The first step is the posterior dissection. And the objective is to find the landmark, and the good landmark is a retrorectal space. The retrorectal space was uh, shown previously by the open surgery uh, by Bill Hild, and you must reproduce uh, this feeling. So you understand where you are because you are in, the, uh, in front of you in the yellow plane, which is the mesorectal plane, and the back to you, you have the uh, fascia of the pelvis, which is a great issue. Or, uh, and different than the, the yellow one. And then the strategy in uh, a laparoscopic surgery is uh, to avoid to change your exposure. So that means that we, we must continue as low as possible with the posterior dissection. So this is the, the, the beginning of the posterior dissection. And uh, if you can, you continue more distally and if possible up to levator animusels. And uh, only when you are not able to continue that, uh, you will consider the next step, the next step which will be uh, the right lateral dissection. So here is the posterior dissection, and you see exactly the same than uh, we did in open. And uh, here is the second step, which is the right lateral dissection. So here you have two options. The first one is to do exactly as is doing build during open. So I call that the medial lateral dissection. That means that you have the same exposure and you try to continue to dissect laterally but in the same way. This is not easy. It depends on uh, the anatomy of the pelvis. But if you can do that, uh, you, you need to take care of the, 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 the pelvic ner nerves which are not always easy to identify by continuing medially and laterally. 
So it's why I consider that uh, uh, most of the time we need to go to the what I call the real lateral uh, second step where you change the exposure, you put the, the rectum, the sigmoid uh, uh, back and left uh, for traction and then you ask to your assistant to make contra-traction exactly as during open surgery. And you preserve your two hands for you uh, as a surgeon to optimize the surgery. And then you, you are able during the step to open the peritoneum laterally if you stay superficially, there is no risk to damage the nerves. And the landmark here is, is the hypogastric nerves. That means that a few millimeters after opening the peritoneum, you, you can find the, the hypogastric nerves. And at the distal part of the hypogastric nerves, again, you have two options. You can continue the dissection laterally on the right. And if you did previously a posterior dissection, very distally, you can uh, connect the posterior dissection. But if you don't understand where you are, you must consider that the risk at this step going too much laterally is uh, uh, to destroy the pelvic plexus, which is always very difficult. So this is a pelvic plexus. If you are able to understand the nerves the anatomy, you are able to continue uh, more distally laterally. But most of the time, if you are not confident with that, you must stop the low, distal, uh, the low uh, lateral dissection. And you must go to the next step, uh, which is uh, anterior dissection. And for anterior dissection, you must open the peritoneum. And uh, when you open the peritoneum, you must stay two centimeters above the Douglas pouch uh, to preserve the de novillier fascia and to facilitate the anatomy. And here, the, the new anatomical landmark is a seminal vesicle. That means that after opening the peritoneum anteriorly, anteriorly you need to find the vesicles, the right vesicles, because this will give you uh, the opportunity to identify much better all the pelvic plexus. So now we try to find and to make contraction up to the uh, vesicles and uh, you have your left hand to optimize the exposure and now you understand that uh, your uh, dissection, your plane of dissection is between the vesicle and the hypogastric nerves. And this is exactly where is the pelvic plexus. And uh, here you see the, all the connection between the mesorectum on the left and uh, all the complex between seminal vesicles, hypogastric nerve, and inferior pelvic plexus and lower presacral nerves. So you have all the complex which are able to be understood if you go step by step posterior, lateral, and uh, uh, anterior. So then you do exactly the same, the, the same, same uh, strategy on the left, and uh, you finish by the last step, which is uh, the anterior dissection. For that, you previously verified that you dissected completely both vesicles, and uh, for that it was easier to uh, to use a very accurate instrument. You can use any kind of instrument, ligature uh, or um, scissors, but something that gives you the opportunity to follow the anatomy. And uh, you see that medially you can push uh, because uh, there is uh, uh, no vessels. So the dissection between the denonvillier fascia and uh, the mesorectum is very easy. Uh, you preserve uh, the, the Donovia fascia, which is coming with the mesorectum because there is no adhesion medially with the vesicle seminals. And only more distally, when you, you arrive at the level of the prostate, then you begin to have some attachment, uh, at least uh, laterally, and then the last step will be a transection of the Donovia fascia. So I wanted to show you... Um, only uh, this uh, step uh, to understand my, my message, which is uh, uh, to facilitate the learning curve, 
the reproducibility for young surgeon, please remember that you must uh, uh, propose your own uh, standardization. This one can help you, but you, you must find a good anatomical landmark. So you see the evolution of rectal cancer in our institution in Bordeaux. What you see in the first table is that uh, the fact that we are doing less TME, we are doing more local excision or watch and wait, so that, that means that organ preservation is taking a more, more and more place in case of rectal cancer surgery. And second, the second table, you see the, the percentage of laparoscopic surgery. Everybody believes that we, that, that we are expert and that we are doing 100%. 100% laparoscopic does not exist. And we were able, never able to go above 80%. And the reason are, the indication for open surgery, when you have a big tumor, total pelvectomy, difficulty for local recurrence, synchronous cancer, simultaneous uh, rectal and hepatectomy uh, resection, or previous complex abdominal surgery, I can tell you we continue to do open surgery. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Eric. Uh, any questions? We can discuss a little bit Eric, about this. Uh, I, I, I think it's quite funny because I do the same thing myself. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that as you said you were going in front of Denonvilliers septum, you were actually going behind it. You were in a beautiful plane, but if you look back at your video, I think you will agree that the uh, at least one layer of Denonvilliers is safely on the back of the vesicle. I'm, yes, I, I, I agree with you that uh, doing laparoscopic surgery, uh, as also during robotic or transidal TME, improve our view, our, uh, our understanding of the anatomy. And Absolutely. I agree completely that in some patients you can uh, understand that uh, the donor VA fascia have two layers and the one is staying usually at the level of the vesicles, and more distally one is uh, preserving the mesorectum. You were certainly leaving a layer. I think the people watching would agree. I see uh, Cecilia nodding, which is a good girl. Uh, <laughs> uh, to, uh, you were certainly leaving one layer on the back of the vesicles, which is optimal for preserving the nerves. It was when, the most when you beautiful can do that. video of nerve preservation on the right. Uh, I really agree. Beautiful. When you can do that, when you can understand, when the anatomy is uh, uh, very fun with you, it's, uh, it's okay. It's a lovely video. Scandalak is called uh, the space between uh, uh, wind and air. Bl uh, wind and rain. <laughs> Okay, uh, you said that uh, you're, you're, it's not possible to do 100% membrane-based surgery, so it means that you are doing 76% uh, of your uh, case were uh, done by uh, laparoscopy. Did you have any experience with uh, hybrid procedures for a very complex case? Uh, you know uh, what I'm speaking about, the uh, combination in between transanal approach and laparoscopy approach, is it included in your 76%? Uh, w when we do hybrid, uh, it's uh, mainly transanal with laparoscopic, so that's, that means it is included in laparoscopic. But now we are moving. Uh, I regret that uh, the surgical technique for TME is changing. What we, what we want is mini-invasive surgery, no abdominal incision. And then what we want is the, the better quality of TME excision with nerve preservation. So uh, most of the surgeons, especially in France, are moving to transanal TME. That means that uh, for all low rectal cancer now, it is becoming a, a new standard. And the question is still open for mid-rectal cancer, especially uh, in men. Because in female, the conventional laparoscopic approach uh, is not so difficult. Uh, Eric, Eric, may I, may I question? Okay. Yes. Um, I don't understand why for you is a contraindication if you have a combined uh, hepatic operation, because uh, usually for the hepatic operation you can use uh, costal or transverse uh, incision, and at the same time you can lose all the benefit of the laparoscopic vision for TMA. No, it is not uh, uh, the, the when, when my last slide uh, showed you some of the reasons for which we did open surgery, but most of the T4 are done laparoscopically 
because after T4 disease, after irradiation, now we use neoadjuvant chemotherapy two months, then radiochemotherapy, then waiting two months more. So at, at the end, uh, after initial T4, you have 80% uh, that became T2 or T3. So that means that conventionally open was uh, converted to laparoscopic surgery in 80 of the cases. But we continue to have st some uh, T4. We have recurrent disease when we do sacroectomy, for example. Uh, we have uh, also the, the pelvectomy. And for hepatectomy, it's very exceptional cases because for hepatectomy, we are using first chemotherapy, then hepatectomy, but uh, then if it is a complex hepatic procedure, we have a second stage of hepatectomy and then we do the TME at the stage together. Eric, uh, Patricia? So you make it look so simple and straightforward, but we, let's not forget, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, that the conversion rate for laparoscopic TME in the CALLER2 trial and other trials has been above 10%. So, based on this technique, where do you think those experienced surgeons who were conducting those trials got into trouble and end up converting? At which steps along your six steps do the surgeons run into difficulties, and what are your tips to try to get out of trouble and avoid a conversion? So, I think that the, the, the problem is uh, the, the strategy, the philosophy of the surgeon, and then also the experience. When you discuss with a surgeon, you have a lot of surgeons they decided to put uh, systematically uh, the, the camera in any kind of abdomen to take the chance of laparoscopic surgery. So this kind of surgeon, uh, they are potentially dangerous because uh, they, they have a higher risk of conversion. Eric, and this, then, is, this and is a randomized controlled trials we're talking no. about. These are, these are experienced surgeons who have 10 to 13% conversion rates across dozens of centers, that's color to trial. And what, what is your question? My question is, where do they get in trouble? These are experienced surgeons. So the audience wants to be able to learn from you on how to become experienced and follow specific steps. But we know experts get in trouble and up to 10% conversion rate. What is the error that the experts are making? What can we learn from the color to trial? So I think that uh, the, the, the rate of conversion is due to the lack of uh, uh, standardization for the indication before surgery. In the color 2 trial, uh, I, I am not sure that all the rectal cancer receive MRI. I am not sure that uh, they receive a new MRI after irradiation because uh, the color 2 trial, they include uh, mainly in, uh, in Holland, in the Dutch country, uh, where the, they have a strategy in management of rectal cancer, which is completely different than, than in France. So uh, we, we don't have, in France, we don't have 20% of, uh, of conversion. An, in an uh, expert center. So uh, I, I don't understand, but uh, 20%, my, my, my comment is if you have 20% in your team, uh, that means that you should stop uh, the surgery because 20% is associated with a lot of side effects, higher risk of complications. So I suppose it was a uh, uh, not experienced surgeon, a uh, low volume center, and uh, not optimal uh, organization of uh, indication for laparoscopic surgery. Uh, but uh, I, I am sure that if you do the same trial in the same country today, they will have a very low rate of uh, conversion because they understood from the study, like I comment uh, with you. Which the first step, the first step, uh, uh, if you look at the, at the, the reason for conversion, they have some, some patient with a fixed tumor. How can you have fixed tumor during surgery if you have a, a safe margin at the MRI before? I think that interpretation of the MRI was not good. So this is the first, the first, uh, uh, first reason. The second reason they, of, of conversion is a, a bulky tumor, a low rectal cancer, and uh, obesity. <laughs> So for us, when we began uh, laparoscopic surgery, BMI above 30 was a contraindication. You could see in my last slide that we have 60% of laparoscopic surgery initially, uh, but, but always 10% no more of conversion because we selected the patient. Previous laparotomy, contraindication. Suspicion of fixation, contraindication. Low rectal cancer with sphincter preservation, Contraindication, obesity, contraindication. So low rate of conversion. 
And then, second criteria, operating with two colorectal surgeons. So this is some recommendation. This is a very good point. I think it comes down to the low rectal cancer, the location, because a lot of the trials did not exclude low rectal cancers, and you saw the highest level of conversion in the, in the distal six centimeters from the anal verge. Thank you, Eric. Well, so we are going to continue, and you are going to speak about uh, speaking sphincter saving approach during laparoscopy TME. So here I will go give you some, some comments uh, about uh, the, the, the potential difficulty you have if you introduce laparoscopic surgery. So oncologically, everybody agrees that uh, uh, if you put the finger and if you have at least one centimeter between the tumor and the anal sphincter, you can discuss the opportunity of sphincter preservation. So one centimeter is theoretically enough. Then you have to discuss the technique. Uh, when we are doing open surgery, we can discuss the technique during or at the end of TME dissection. Laparoscopically, I do not recommend that. You must anticipate, you must decide before to avoid any complications. So here are the three options. Uh, stapling, conventional manual anastomosis, or uh, intersphincteric resection. So uh, initially, most of the surgeons you see they are doing stapling, which is the most common uh, sphincter saving procedure, and you see that the stapler is coming from the right lower quadrant. We know in this situation that the risk of uh, n increased number of cathedrals is increased. It is at least two, and maybe three. And uh, here you have a form, uh, uh, um, the, the, the aspect of uh, the firing, which is uh, irregular, like a Z, and which can induce some ischemia to the residual rectum. So it was demonstrated that uh, lower the number of firings, uh, lower the risk of leak. So for that, the best option, as uh, demonstrated in the study, is uh, to come uh, uh, from, uh, from the vertical approach. That means that you, you stapler is coming from the pubis and not from uh, the right lower quadrant. And with that, you have the advantage as the stapler push spontaneously the genital organs, organs. you don't need uh, an instrument to push, uh, to retract the organ. And then in very often you will get only one firing instead of two and never three. And then you don't risk to take the vagina with a circular stapling uh, if you use this kind of uh, uh, stapling. Then you can have uh, also an, uh, an option, uh, if you are not able to use uh, the instrument, the laparoscopic instrument, you can take uh, an open stapler and uh, you put your camera inside together with the, the instrument. You don't need the pneumoperitoneum and you can uh, use, uh, for example, the contour, uh, which gives you to the opportunity to close both sides of the rectum. So this is not from the literature. This is for my personal experience. So clearly, I consider that uh, uh, laparoscopically, laparoscopic surgery changed how to do sphincter preservation compared to open surgery. So on the left, you have uh, the level of uh, the, the tumor and the chance, not the level of the tumor, the level where you can uh, have the opportunity uh, to, uh, to make a stapling. In open surgery, I think that you can go very low. Even for a tumor at five centimeters, you can put a contour below that in open surgery. In laparoscopic surgery, below seven in male, it is technically impossible. If you do that, you will have a risk of distal positive margin. And if you have an anterior tumor, you are losing one centimeter more. So you must accept, we must consider that introduction of laparoscopic surgery makes technically more difficult the opportunity to do a laparoscopic stapling. So knowing that, you decide before surgery if you anticipate stapling or manual coloanal anastomosis. So my first message is vertical stapling is better. Option is non-laparoscopic instrument and indication of stapling as restricting to uh, mid-rectal cancer but never low rectal cancer, especially in male. So then you have the discussion when you want absolutely to staple the, the, the rectum and uh, you did a very nice laparoscopic TME 
no bleeding, but at the end, you, you observe some bleeding. If you had no bleeding during surgery, but bleeding at the end of surgery after stapling, you need to put your finger into the rectum, and if uh, you see your gloves, that means that you have incomplete stapling. And that's explain the bleeding. And then the question is what to do. So the first option, the first option is you have two options. You can, I am going too fast. Uh, the first option is to try to dissect more distally the rectum and then to try to staple again. And the, the second option is uh, to suture. So you can suture laparoscopically, it's not so easy. With robot, it's easier. But you can also suture transinally if the stapling is very low. But uh, more efficient is to convert to a coloinal anastomosis. So incomplete stapling, new stapling, laparoscopic or transinal suturing, or convert to Hanson coloinal so, uh, anastomosis. So the conventional Hanson anastomosis is part procedure. That means that you need to remove the mucosa. You preserve all the sphincter. Here there is not intersphincteric dissection. And then you do the anastomosis at the dentate line. So we, we have here the, the, the example. So you need a lot of instrument. This is what I needed uh, yesterday to, to help me for the transinal procedure. And then uh, if you use uh, the Lone Star, you export the anus, you use the retractor, and you see the tumor. Here we see the tumor. I evaluate the tumor two centimeters between the dendrite line and the tumor. So that means that I have at least one centimeter between the anal sphincter and the tumor. So here we cut the rectum one centimeter above uh, the, the dendrite line. And this is what we did uh, yesterday, cutting lower, maybe yesterday. Then we close the rectum to avoid uh, spillage. And then what we are doing, we remove the specimen. We, we, we cut the colon, exactly what we did yesterday. Uh, we verify the quality of the mesorectum. And then we cut and we will do a, a pouch. But first we reintroduce. We look at the initially uh, the, 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 the TME, the prostate. This is a prostate. And uh, you are the right cavernous nerves uh, and the, the, the left one. So this is the, the, the bundle. This is the this part. We need to understand where it is and to preserve. And we verify the hemostasis. And then we, we do the conventional Parks procedure, removing the dendrite line. So we begin f at the level of the dendrite line. And we remove all the mucosa above the dendrite line to facilitate adhesion between the colon and, uh, and the anal canal. This is also what you need to do when you are doing uh, a pull through to facilitate adhesion. And, and then we do the coloanal anastomosis. So indication of such anastomosis is low rectal cancer when you have less than two centimeters from anal ring or a difficulty or failure for rectal stapling. And the last discussion of sphincter preservation is ultra low sphincter preservation. This is uh, for tumor less than one centimeter from the anal ring to avoid uh, APR, and you have partial and total ESR. So in such a surgery, uh, you have uh, you have first the dissection of the circular incision of the anal canal, and then uh, we we make a dissection between both sphincter, internal and external sphincter. And uh, this is uh, the beginning of the transanal TME, but uh, much lower because the dissection, the transection is not the rectum. It is between the internal sphincter and the external sphincter. So, and I think that uh, you need to learn more about the transanal approach if you want uh, one day to develop a TA TME, uh, because this is part of the procedure. And here we will go to, uh, up to the, to the mesorectum. Uh, and for that, you need to cut the, the aponevrosis uh, of uh, the levator and the muscles. And here we cut it uh, to find the, the mesorectum. And then you can have also uh, total intersphincteric resection. This is the tumor, something uh, like a, a white scar going uh, uh, below the dendrite line. And we need to cut there at the level of the skin. 
So only a few surgeons want to do that because they, they believe there is a risk of, uh, of uh, incontinence. But if you have a team to manage uh, incontinence uh, uh, after, in terms of pelvic floor uh, uh, disease, uh, you can propose a very aggressive uh, sphincter preservation procedure, uh, removing uh, all the wall of the internal sphincter. How to decide what kind of surgery in low rectal cancer? Because uh, you must anticipate before surgery. You should never decide during surgery. So we propose uh, in Bordeaux classification of low rectal cancer. And uh, you see that we call type 1 supra-anal cancer. And uh, this is when you have more than one centimeter from the anal ring, uh, safe 10 millimeter distal margin. This is a conventional low anterior resection. Type 2 is a juxta anal tumor, and for that uh, you have uh, less than one centimeter of distal margin. The standard is APR. The option in France is uh, to uh, give the patient to an expert to uh, propose intersphincteric resection. And when you have type 3 intra anal tumor, as the last uh, clip, uh, this is conventionally APR, but you can propose total intersphincteric resection. And uh, the type 4, which is a trans anal taking uh, levatory muscles or external anal sphincter is for us the absolute residual indication for APR. So this is our rate of APR in Bordeaux where we recite mainly low rectal cancer. You see this is around 10%, but if you take here only the low rectal cancer, you see that uh, one third have a conventional coloanal anastomosis, one third intersphincteric resection, one third now receive organ preservation, and you have 12% in low rectal cancer having APR. So my conclusion is that uh, laparoscopic uh, sphincter saving surgery, the standard uh, is uh, rectal stapling, but not for low rectal cancer where coloanal astomosis is uh, 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 more efficient. Extreme conservative surgery can be proposed uh, by experienced surgeon having uh, a gastroenterologist uh, team to take care of bowel dysfunction and incontinence and salvage sphincter preservation can be also saved by uh, delayed coloanal acidosis. Thank you very much for your attention. Nice talk, Eric. I'm going to ask you a uh, day-by-day no, -day questions. That means that uh, uh, you, you spoke about uh, use of a staper when you decide to transect the rectum by laparoscopy, and sometimes you go from the anus. You, you transect from, from the premium. So I, I want to uh, know from you, which landmark do you use? How far from date to line do, do you uh, select the patients for total laparoscopy, and how far from date to line do you select? Uh, what I want to say is that it's one centimeter, two or three centimeters for, for, for you from date to line to, to use this taper by laparoscopy. Which is the, the, the margin that you decide for laparoscopy and for uh, perineal approach? So it was in one slide where I tell you that in male, seven centimeter from a uh, anal ring, it is five centimeters from the dendet line, uh, it is uh, the limit. Above, it's laparoscopic stapling. Below, if the tumor is below, less than five centimeters from the dendet line, it is decided before it will be a manual coloanal astomosis. Eric, with the upcoming of uh, 30 millimeter staplers, especially the robotic one is coming out, you think that will change your um, so, distance? So it, it could be one option, because uh, I talked with uh, Professor Wane from Montpellier, who is uh, using a lot of robots, and he told me that uh, it changed. It changed the, 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 the opportunity, and he's able now to do more stepping. So mm -hmm. I agree with that. We, we know also that uh, Metronic will propose a complete... Uh, 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 Flex. What? Yes. What? One hundred? No. Ninety degrees. Ninety degree angulation. Uh, laparoscopic stapling. So it will change also. But uh, what we change? 
and what we are waiting is not robot, it's not new laparoscopic instrument. Because what we are doing now, what is the future for me, is more transanal TME. That means that for low rectal cancer, transanal TME. But for mid rectal cancer, transanal TME, cutting not at the dendet line, not at the one centimeter uh, uh, above, but uh, two centimeters above the sphincter to preserve distal rectum and then making a pulse ring with the distal rectum and doing a circular stapling. So now we change everything. There is no more laparoscopic stapling and we are beginning to do transanal low rectal stapling. Okay, uh, another, another question is regarding... Maybe the, the future. Yeah, maybe, but uh, location is important for you. It's, it's tumor is uh, five centimeters from the eight, eight line anterior and posterior is a little bit different. Yes. Because uh, is it different for you? To yes. See, if it is an anterior tumor uh, between the low and the mid rectal uh, level, if it is anterior, stapling is dangerous because you have angulation at the moment and there is a risk of uh, uh, insufficient distal margin. If the tumor is posterior, uh, the risk is lower, so you can, you can try. But uh, I think that everybody must uh, work with its own experience, but you must try to decide before. Because uh, at the end, it's, uh, it's not good to go through the tumor. Just a question, when, when you go so low, you do it open to put uh, the, the 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 contour as I I, yeah. I show you. That's, so <coughs> that's the I, I stopped to do that. I did that in the past, but uh, I I wanted to show that because maybe some surgeon will be happy with that. You do do by laparoscopy. And if it is huh? difficult, if if it is difficult, laparoscopically, uh, I do manual transinal dissection. The lesson should be that the surgeon has to be prepared to go for a transanal approach. So I, I think that you have a tumor at 5 cm. Stapling is not possible. Begin transanally. The surgery will be easier. The TME will be easier, and you will be able to avoid APR. So this is the history, and everybody must think about that. But I think the audience should remember that when you make an incision to do your stapling of the rectal stump, this is not considered a conversion. So that was part of the ambiguity of the ECOSOC trial, is there was a lot of argument because people said that's technically a conversion. It is not a conversion because you've still been able to use laparoscopy for the majority of the dissection, but you're controlling your rectal stump using a fine and steel incision and an open technique to ensure a negative distal margin. And I, I think it's important to emphasize that although you've abandoned it because you found a better way to do it transanally, this is not a sign of failure. And this is a very, very safe middle ground as you're getting more comfortable with laparoscopic and robotic techniques, okay? Because the last thing you want is a positive margin, but there's no problem doing an open rectal transaction. It's a, the it's a right thing to do, for, for especially for people getting started on this, on this journey. Do you, have, do, you have a, Eric, do you have any experience with uh, this uh, cartridge from uh, Medtronic that is a uh, curved one? It doesn't work. Why? Just the, the, uh, the, 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 the curves... Yeah. Uh, is working uh, mainly to go vertically, but if you want to, to pull it uh, laterally, uh, to, to go between the two parts of the instrument, you need to have no tumor or a very small tumor. If you have a big tumor, you cannot introduce it. So for me, it doesn't work. Okay. Thank you. Just a, a very last question. How many, well, how many cases you have seen that your uh, cut is uh, too short? Cut you don't have one centimeter. So it, it, ne it never appears macroscopically because we anticipate. But because you don't feel well sometimes. It's, it's why, I, I, I agree with you, it's why you cannot uh, begin laparoscopically uh, rectal cancer without uh, looking at the surgical view of the MRI. With a sagittal view of the MRI, you know exactly how many centimeters you have between the tumor and the anal sphincter. So you anticipate how many centimeters you want and where you will put your stapler. And then you put the finger and you verify. So it should never arrive. Eric, for, for the audience, last question. Um, 
you show a, a failure of a stapler. It, it happens, but it's not the most common bleeding when you have, usually it's a staple line that's bleeding a little bit. If you have the staple line that's bleeding, it's still complete, how do you recommend them controlling the bleeding? Putting a clip, putting a suture, um, what not to do? You, you mean if we have a, a bleeding uh, at the distal at the staple pelvis. line. At the staple line? Yes. That's more common than having a failure of the staple line. So if you have a bleeding at the stepper line, usually, enfin, it's not a problem because it should stop. But if you have a, a bleeding at stepper line, if it is at the, the this, uh, lateral part, uh, if it is outside of the rectum where you have residual fat, I don't know, here you can coagulate. If it is where you have some staples, you cannot coagulate because you can uh, destroy the, the, the suture. So e here you need to put a stitch. Okay, very good. Uh, very nice and hot topics we discussed here. But now we are going to jump a little bit on, on the more advanced procedures with Professor Junjo Kuda from Osaka. He's going to speak on uh, extensive TME for T4 uh, rectal cancer by laparoscopy. Thank you very much. I'm very, it's my pleasure, great pleasure and honor uh, to uh, talk uh, here. Uh, especially in front of uh, King of TME, Professor Hill. And I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have no COI. Of course, uh, with uh, Professor Hill, no COI. Just I have a sincere respect. And uh, this is an exceptional uh, indication. And that's why uh, please find your own strategy. It is, this is my strategy. So think about rectal cancer surgery. That means TME. TME is only one dissection brain. I think probably three brains. So strictly speaking, we can sh and should choose the brain. This is a diagram of the rectum. You see, the rectum is here, uh, covered by propria. So the tumor is here, just outside the TME, uh, just outside the layer, which is called layer A. That is standard TME. Uh, Professor Hughes uh, sometimes, uh, many times said, most in the brain. That is uh, probably their A TME. This is uh, standard. You see, I use a 3D laparoscope. I can find the layer A TME very well, so just outside the plus appropriate. That means you see, just use electrocautery. That is simple operation, just like open surgery. I just cut, like it's playing a violin. I've never experienced playing violin, but just like that. And step by step, the posterior side just into the inner canal and I transect the rectum in one cartridge. That is my favorite. This is the ATME, covered by hypogastric nerve pasture, and reinforce the anastomosis without robot. I enjoy suturing without robot, like this. Sorry, that is a very easy case. That's why I said. And how about T3 cancer? The TME is not enough. Outside the hypogastric nerve first year, that means the B TME. That is the appropriate. Think about T4 cancer. The A and the B, not enough. Just behind presacral first year. That is very dangerous brain, but that is the only point to dissect. This kind, this kind of concept uh, we called innovative telomere TME. Standard brain to extensive brain, depending on the patient uh, tumor depth. And the uh, second point is, I prefer to use this kind of five ports and inside the stapler from the light lower quadrant, as lower as CAS can. In addition, uh, Patricia said to me, uh, uh, said the previous three, in difficult situation. In difficult situation means we add one port, one more port, not reduced port surgery. 
additional port surgery like this, not only the port, but also the, our spirit, you know? Not only port, but also we put spirit additionally. Like this, additional spirit surgery. You see? My laparoscopist is much stronger than me, like that. You see? His face is very strict. <laughs> and uh, another point is, as Eric said, the traction system. We encircle the apparatus using cotton tape like that. And first, back side, back side traction like this. Right side, parallel traction. Left side, crossing traction. And uh, lower to the anal canal. At that time, parallel crossing traction. This kind of traction system is very, very useful. That's why I visited China many times by myself. I did the many operations there without my favorite assistant or laparoscopist. Now the system is very important. And think about a T3 or T4 cancer, especially bulky case as uh, Western countries like the Western countries, we put the uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy or radiotherapy. Especially this patient had a tumor very low, only four centimeters from anal batch and T3, uh, almost T4, and M2, stage 3B. You see, the bulky tumor there, the around the rectum, the resonant lymph node, and we did uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy, very effective, cause uh, radiation uh, influenced the uh, inner sphincter. That's why we didn't do a radiation, just chemotherapy. And you see this uh, levator ani, a probably invasion, but after neoadjuvant therapy, no invasion. That we try, the sphincter saving surgery, laparoscopic, Super anterioration. This is the Japanese patient, a little bit thin compared to Western countries, but the same strategy. Uh, proximal D3 dissection. Now the dis uh, dissection, uh, mobilization of the rectum. Parallel traction, right side, like that. And crossing traction, left side. And backside traction, backside, posterior side. Step by step traction system is facilitate the dissection. The parallel crossing, the, now we dissect the anterior side. We can choose three planes in front of the denobialis fascia, behind or inside the denobialis fascia. We choose inside the denobialis fascia in this case and preserve the neurovascular band, uh, both anterolateral space, all the way to the inner canal like this. And the most important point, the backside. Backside as much as into the anal canal like that. And make sure the tumor location using colonoscopy and put the creep here and the touch of creep and rectal washout. Even this kind of very low rectum, we can transect in one cartridge like that. If you have some concern, put the suture. We enjoy suturing like that. And after that, double stapling anastomosis in conventional fashion to make sure the anastomosis site using colonoscopy, finally. In this patient, we didn't do uh, any stoma like that. Uh, next is the lateral lymph node dissection. And you see, not so common, however, uh, some, uh, sometimes this kind of patient invades the autonomic nerve, even after chemoradiation therapy, you see, like this, and several, uh, a couple of swollen lymph nodes at the lateral side. At that time, we are CTME, like this, and broke uh, dissection around the uh, lateral lymph node area left side. However, right side, we preserve the nerves to uh, maintain the urinary function. 
This is the case. You see, there A, there B, and there C. We can see and choose the plane. I choose the C just on the bone, promontory. You see, very hard. And after the dissection, I put the uh, pestle loop to isolate it, the left lateral dissection alongside the external and internal iron vessels. And we combine the dissection of obturator vessels to keep the uh, obturator nerves here. Alongside the urinary bladder, this is the proximal side of the uh, obturator artery and vessels, I mean. And alongside the dissection, the internal iliac, we can feel the scattering knob here, very soft. And this is the root of middle colic artery here. We dissect it like this. And the combined resection of lateral link node with autonomic knob, left side. So asymmetrical CME, left side is the C, right side they are B and A. And make sure, uh, and left side we dissected neurovascular bundle, including. However, right side we preserved. And finally, we transject the rectum also in one cartridge, like this. This is a conventional uh, method. And after confirmation of hemostasis, you see, left side is the C, obturator nerves, uh, superior vesical artery, left ureter, nothing there. And anastomosed, we preserve the anus. But still immature without gore. This is the case. Belly, belly, extensive cancer in base, the uh, vagina and the sacrum, sacral bone, a little bit. In this case, in many uh, institutions, uh, try to do TPE, total pelvic excentration. However, we want to preserve the uh, urinary bladder. That's why we select this brain. Just complete resection of the posterior side of vagina and resection of the sacral five and Cox juice, combined resection. This is a case, you see, right side, we preserve the nerves and ureter there. Left side, uh, combined resection. This is a root of IMA, this redissection. A little bit breather. We stop breathing, dike suction coagulation, soft coagulation, very easy. And dissected. The medial to lateral to identify the IMB. As you can see, we use only electrocautery. No regression, no harmonic. You see? Just put the creep and dissect it. This is a left urator to keep it. And we choose the rear CTM, back side of the heavy gastric, to expose the left internal and external iliac veins, uh, artery. Here, like that. This is the rear C. This is the left common iliac vein. And right side, we preserve the nerves. <coughs> so, right side, the B and the A, preserve the autonomic nerves there. Left side, combined resection, like the previous video, the obturator nerves pre uh, keep it. However, all the left lateral link node is dissected. The right side is just take out the ring node uh, to preserve the nerves. You see, this is a brain. This is the rear C. Expose the internal and external iliac vessels. And just close to the internal iliac vessels. And uh, this is a tumor there. So we divide, dissect it, just cut with muscle and behind the bone. You see, just electrocautery. Right side, the preserve, the nerves, and back side, you see, this is the uh, cocoa juice and sacrum five divided using electrocautery. Bio-precise dissect, 
very, very strong uh, electrical cautery can cut the bone like that. You see? And the uh, anterior side, we cut the vagina anteriorly. The anterior wall is preserved, and the back posterior wall is all the way combinatization. That cannot be seen by open surgery, very well uh, or visible and laparoscopy. And finally, the tumor is extracted from the perineum. And you see, this is the cutting line here. Bone is here, like that. This is a TP uh, miles operation with combined rejection of posterior vagina and bone. You see, this is a specimen, the posterior side, and tumor, and this is a sacral five and cox juice, the combined rejection by laparoscopy. Another one is, last one is the tumor embeds the prostata and sac uh, seminal vesicle. At that time, uh, some uh, majority of institution, this kind of TPE. TPE is uh, performed by laparoscopy, but too excessive, so I want to preserve the anus and also urinary bladder. So our design is here using TAMIS. TAMIS disadvantage is outside dissection, but in this case, outside dissection is okay. We don't care about the urethra. That's why the TAMIS is good, good indication in this case. The by laparoscopy, in front of the denombia, not the denombia, seminal vesicle, in front of the seminal vesicle dissected and cut the left seminal duct and uh, combined resection. This is a ureter. We don't cut ureter. Ureter is told me, don't cut me. And right side, you see the seminal duct, but we preserve the nerves. And all the way to the juncture of the uh, prostate. Next, uh, extra peritoneal approach, like a prostatectomy, you see. This is a prostate there. The juncture of prostate and the urinary bladder I divided here. And uh, this is the brain of the uh, seminal vesicle, and the urethra is also cut. The final approach is tamis. Uh, dissection two or three centimeter, the gel point pass, as I said before, the anterior side is okay. Or you can cut the urethra and connect it. And combined rejection of you see the seminal vesicle and prostata. And we keep the anus and Hanson, and final step is urethra, urinary, uh, bladder, suturing. That is a problem. Nowadays, majority of urologists use robot. That means, you know, only a few urologists can suture by laparoscopy. That is a problem. That's why I keep uh, one or two good urologists for this kind of operation. The final message is, future is not tomorrow, just today and now. We must keep improving every minute. And incidentally, on uh, the Hotunitri, this time, these three guys are the chairman. I'm very happy here. And you see, this is uh, my, our own strategy. Don't copy it. And <laughs> too dangerous. And the surgeon imaginative and the creative mind must be the key to change your world and find your own strategy. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Junja, congratulations. It's very difficult to comment after, after a presentation like that. I believe that. Uh, no, uh, it's a, maybe this is the top of the top the, of the master in minimal invasive surgery. So it's a, uh, I believe that uh, maybe one day we can arrive there, but uh, it's, it's, it's very difficult and needs uh, 
a lot of uh, skill and uh, lots of challenge in, and uh, mood tasks for doing a procedure like that. So, any anyone in auditorium want to do a question? Yeah, yeah, Are yeah. you going to start tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> No, I just, just want to ask, uh, do you give any new adjuvant radio chemo before uh, uh, the uh, rectal tumor? And um, I, I believe I hear today that uh, T4 can be changed to, two, uh, to uh, T2. Um, so I wonder how did you get all the big tumors? Thank you. Thank you very much. A very, very good question. And uh, formerly, uh, until the 2013, uh, we did the same uh, chemo radiation therapy for all the uh, patient with lower rectal cancer, T3 or T4 cancer. But you, as you know, the uh, side effect, adverse effect uh, of radiation, to the, especially to the inner sphincter, I stopped uh, at that time. And nowadays, um, we do the mainly chemo radiation without uh, chemo, uh, chemotherapy, without radiation uh, to the patient with a very low rectal cancer. And as you see, uh, very effective in some cases around 10 to 12 percent. Hmm. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. This, yeah. Just one question, to put this into context, can you describe to the audience your annual volume of rectal cancer at your institution in Kyoto? Just uh, give some background about the, your volume. Uh, not so much uh, compared to Korea. Uh, we did around uh, 500 cases per year. Thank you very much. Well, uh, we have a lot of uh, people connected with us from several parts of uh, the world. Uh, some questions regarding technique that uh, were already uh, answered. And, uh, but now we are going to continue with the, a good debate. Uh, uh, debate regarding the technique for uh, total mesorectal incision, and so uh, and the question is exactly that: What is the best approach for total mesorectal incision? Patricia Silla is going to say that the laparoscopy is superior to open TME. Is it really? I hope we've already established that, but if we haven't, thank you. Merci. So thank you again for the opportunity to participate in this really fabulous uh, debate. It gets more and more controversial as we go, but uh, always fun, and uh, uh, this is a pleasure to be part of this. So my assignment was to... Well, oh. uh, unfortunately, you guys that are connected, we have to disconnect now because we are going to continue our course. If you want to see this uh, discussion, you should come back here in the next course. Yeah. So thank you very much for Aww. your attention. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, guys. It took too long. <laughs> <laughs> Zut alors.